I'm James Johnson, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. Hello, and welcome back to the Niagara Pro Tips. In this video, we're going to continue focusing on PX Includes and showing some more complex examples. If you haven't already watched the previous video, I'd suggest you take a look at that. It shows you the basics of PX Includes and using variable ORDs with a couple of examples. In this case, in my station, under drivers, I have a BACnet network, and there's a number of devices under this uh, floor one device folder. And when I look at my air handler, I have a PX view uh, assigned, which has a bound table in it. And this bound table is uh, using a BQL query against the station's audit history. And we can take a look at that query and see it's uh, the base is the audit history, and it's a BQL query uh, specifying the projection to show the desired columns. And it's filtering with a predicate where uh, the target of the record is going to have the slot path leading up to air handler one. And then the operation is going to be invoked. So things like overrides and auto actions and things that users might be invoking. And this is a relative PX view, but that bound table is essentially using a hard-coded or specific uh, BQL query. So if I were to look at the same uh, graphic on another device, I'm still seeing audit records from Air Handler 1. Obviously, we don't want to have to create unique PX graphics for every one of these. So this is a case where using a PX include uh, may be a good solution. And uh, to look at that under my file space and PX, and includes now it's not a requirement to put these under the include includes folder i just create one to kind of organize things here and what i've created is a, a px file called audit include and when i take a look at this i've already made some changes the the root element is a canvas pane instead of a scroll pane and the scaling uh, we would probably want to set to none in this case and i have the the canvas size set appropriately and underneath that, we have a bound table widget, which I've added. And notice there is no ORD configured for the table binder. In the PX editor, uh, we've created a PX property. And you do that by clicking the plus button. And then you would type in the name of it, such as query ORD. In this case, it's a Baja ORD. Now, I've already added uh, that property to my PX file. And the value of that PX property is null meaning the ORD has not been configured. And the reason why I want to utilize this PX property is uh, when we have bindings on things, the binding itself is used to animate the properties. So I can use this binding, this ORD, and I could use that to animate different properties on the widget, but we can't really animate the ORD itself uh, because that's what's used to have a binding to, to, to then animate the properties. In this case, what we're going to do is right click the ORD property and then from the link dialog, we'll hover over the arrow and see that the query ORD property is available. Now that only shows up uh, to be linked when the uh, property type matches the uh, property object type that you're trying to link it to as well. So for example, if I were to right click on layer, you'll see link is, is grayed out. Uh, and uh, even if it's something that's enabled like color rows, you'll see query ORD is grayed out because that type of property doesn't match the uh, Boolean property that color rows is. So you can only link to matching properties. So in this case, uh, again, we'll do the link and select query ORD. Now notice uh, it shades it with kind of a, a pale green here. Okay, so now that we have that set up, I'll go back to my audit uh, view over here and I'm going to delete this bound table now uh, there's different ways that you can go about this uh, definitely and one way is utilizing a component from the Vicom Pro module and in this case I've added uh, this property which is a format to ORD resolver from B, uh, the Vicom Pro palette and I've added that underneath each of these air handler devices and named it query helper and what this is, is a B format property. So that takes static text uh, as well as B format syntax, and it's being resolved against this uh, query helper component itself. Uh, so in this case, you'll see percent parent dot name percent, and the rest of this is all static text. 
so the component will take this B format and it will resolve that against itself. And we'll see in the actual resolved uh, ORD value, error handler one is resolved from this parent.name syntax here. So that gets substituted into the actual ORD. And this will construct the ORD that's a, a unique ORD for each error handler using a component like this under each device. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to drag in my audit include PX file, which is similar to what I showed in the previous video with the header PX. Uh, and in this case, when we look at this uh, PX include widget, what we're going to notice is it has a property on it called query ORD. So this is a property which maps through to the PX property named query ORD that's in the audit include PX file itself. And what we can do here is we can add a value binding then to this uh, PX include widget. And for the ORD, we're going to use the component chooser and I will uh, look under the BACnet network and 4.1 and error handler one, and we'll pick the um, query helper. And specifically, we want to uh, get the ORD property on that. And the ORD property will store that uh, BQL query uh, for that specific error handler. And what we can do with that binding then is we can animate this query ORD property. So I'll right click on that and choose animate. And in this case, what we want to do instead of using fixed simple or active state, we want to use a pass through binding. And what that's telling it to do is go get the actual value from the ORD property on the query uh, helper and then pass that through and set that as the uh, query ORD property, the PX include property, and set that, which is linked to the bound table. So that should then uh, cause the bound table to have the query that we want it to for this particular error handler. And uh, obviously this is a relative PX view. So I would need to either use the relativized PX uh, button there, or I would need to uh, look at this ORD on the value binding and we would need to make it relative to uh, the error handler device, right? Slot colon, query helper, and then slash ORD. Uh, so that makes that a relative ORD. So now when we go look at error handler 2's uh, audit uh, PX view as well, now we're seeing only the audit history records associated with error handler 2. And that allows me to use a single relativized PX view to do that. Now, another uh, use case that we see uh, maybe a reason to try to animate the source of uh, a PX include is to uh, use something like this scenario um, and think about uh, maybe having a, uh, a kiosk display and you want to rotate uh, through a set of uh, PX views. Uh, on a timer basis so that uh, you don't want to have human interaction, but you want to rotate through some displays maybe. And uh, in this case, what I've done is uh, I've created a PX file that I called uh, blank include PX. And when we take a look at this, we'll see it's just a, it's a canvas pane. And what I did was I just drug in a PX include widget from the Baja UI palette under the widgets folder. And I've also created a PX property very similar to the query ORD on the previous example. It's just a Baja ORD uh, and it's named rotation ORD. And the value again is null, meaning that it's not set. And what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, link this uh, rotation ORD property, uh, the rotation ORD property, we're gonna link it to the ORD property on this PX include widget as well. Okay, so now uh, we can uh, go up to our PX file here and actually we'll talk about the, the Wiresheet logic here for a second first, I guess. Uh, so what I've done here is uh, just using uh, some standard components, uh, have this uh, multi-vibrator from Kit Control, which has a period of 10 seconds because I wanted it to be fairly quick about the change. And I've linked that uh, output slot, out slot into the count up on this counter block. So each time this toggles, it causes my counter to in increment. And then I link that value out to a greater than uh, block and set it to say if it's greater than three, this will output a true. 
and that true will uh, reset or preset the counter back to zero each time it uh, reaches three. And then I link that output of the counter into a string select. And what I've done is I've just configured uh, these file ords to different PX views that I wanted to display. And this uh, out slot will then update as the index number changes, that will uh, update to whichever index A, B, or C, one, two, or zero, one, two, uh, in this case. Um, another way that you might go about this is a program object. Uh, you can see here that uh, in this case, I've got a fairly simple program object, has a B ORD list that allows me to add this as many ORDs as I want to in my rotation. And then there's a, an execute period here, which I have set at 10 seconds. And essentially what it's doing is just going through uh, that array of ORDs and this uh, PX ORDs B ORD list property, and it updates the active ORD property um, with the next ORD in the list. And once it gets to the end, it wraps back around. So different ways to do it. You could, you know, you can build this with just some standard um, wire sheet components like I've done here, or you could get maybe a little bit more um, uh, savvy with a program object in that case. So I have a, a PX rotation uh, or a dashboard kiosk view, I guess, on this PX rotation folder. And it has a scroll pane and a canvas pane. And what we're gonna do then is I'm gonna drag in my uh, blank include PX file here. And uh, this uh, PX file is the, the same size as the canvas. And very similar to uh, what we did uh, previously is we're going to add a value binding here. And uh, again, the PX include has, in this case, the rotation ORD property on it. And what we're gonna do is use this ORD uh, to then animate that property. So looking at my component chooser, if I look under the PX rotation and I have a string select component, I can pick the out slot uh, from that component. And uh, once I pick the out slot, then my rotation order property I can animate that, and in this case, we've got a number of choices, but instead of using pass-through, uh, because it's a string and the property is actually an ORD, uh, what I wanna do is use this uh, status string to ORD uh, property. Uh, now, if I were uh, um, using, uh, instead of this uh, string select, in my example, if I was using uh, this uh, PX rotation helper program object, and I was using the active ORD property, that's actually a B ORD property. And in that case, my rotation ORD, when I go to animate it, that's a case where I would wanna use the pass-through binding because the property on the program object is a B ORD and the property in the PX include is a B ORD. So they're like types and we just pass straight through. Uh, but I'm gonna go back and change this uh, to my string select because uh, that's the example that I did want to show you. And uh, when we do this, then on the animation, again, we have to do a conversion. So we're taking the status string, uh, which is the output of the string select, and it's going to convert that to a B ORD, and that will set the value in the uh, PX uh, include then. So you can see then what will happen is as the, uh, as the PX view is visible, uh, that index number changes at a 10 second interval and that causes the animation of the, the source PX include uh, ORD to change and will oscillate through uh, these uh, PX pages, whichever ones that we designate. So hopefully you found that uh, interesting and gives you some ideas about some things that you can do with your PX includes uh, in animating an ORD using a PX property uh, where normally the ORD is used to animate properties of widgets. So we're kind of doing a little bit of a redirect there using the PX include with a PX property linked to the ORD. Again, hope you enjoyed the, the video and stay tuned for more videos.